Hey, welcome back to another walkthrough. This week we're going to look at Excel 6G Internship Travel. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and download our materials. Remember, do not download all files. Make sure you click on each individual file. I've already downloaded my files. I have them in my downloads folder. Make sure if it says up here, enable editing, you hit enable editing. Now let's begin. On step number two, it wants us to go to the internships by industry worksheet and select the range B4 to F10. So I'm gonna come over here, select B4 to F10. And it wants me to use the quick analysis tool to insert spark lines. But to do this, we're going to click on the quick analysis icon right here at the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to click on spark lines. And we want to use line spark lines. And notice when I click on that, it will automatically put them all in for us under trend. And what these spark lines represent is a quick look at what is going on with the data. So it looks like this has continuously gone up whereas this went up, down, and then back up. So it just gives you a quick glance at what the data, what the numbers are doing. For my Mac users, in order to put in the spark lines, you're gonna to need to come to the insert tab and you will insert the spark lines under spark lines. So that's for my Mac users. So now for step number three, it wants me to format the spark lines. So make sure your spark lines are highlighted. Make sure all of them are highlighted. And notice that we have a spark line contextual tab up here. Let's go ahead and click on that spark line contextual tab. And we want to put a show the high point and show the last point. So let's put a check mark next to high point and last point. It also wants us to uh, select the style gallery, the first row, second style. So let's go ahead and come to our styles grouping. Let's click the down arrow with the line above it. It says the first row, second style, this one right here, the brown spark lines. We'll click on that. So now step number four, it says by using the data ranges in A3 to F3. So let's go ahead and highlight A3 to F3. And we want to hold down the control key and we want to highlight A7 to F7. So we want to highlight A3 to F3 and A7 to F7. And we're going to insert a line with markers chart. So we're going to come up to the insert tab here under our charts grouping. Notice this little icon right here. If you hover over it, it says insert line or chart area. We'll go ahead and click the down arrow. We're going to do a line with markers chart. And notice how it will put the chart in for us. It only has technology. It wants us to position the chart so that the upper left corner of the chart aligns with the upper left corner of A13. So I'm going to put my cursor right about here in the chart area. And notice how I have four arrows pointing away from each other. That is my move handle. So I'm going to click hold. I'm going to drag this so I can put it right up here inside of A13. And let go. It wants us to change the name of the chart title to internships available on technology. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the chart title here. I'm going to take my cursor and click at the beginning of technology. So my cursor is in front of the T. I'm going to type in internships available in, and then make sure I have a space in between uh, in and technology. Next, it wants us to edit the vertical line. So notice how much dead space I have right here. So we want to get rid of some of this dead space. So I'm going to come over here to my axis where it says 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And I want to double click on that. And when I double click on it, it's going to open up my format axis. If need be, you can right click on that axis and hit format axis and it'll open up as well. But once you have this format axis sidebar opened, we want to change the minimum to 35. And we want to change the major to 5. 
And notice what that does is it now gets rid of that dead space. It starts our chart off at 35, and now we have a better representation of what that data is doing. So moving right along, step number seven says format the plot area with a solid fill. So once you're clicked inside of our chart here, so if we click on this format tab here, we can come over to our current selection and we want to select the plot area, which if it's not already selected, go ahead and hit the down arrow right here and select plot area. Notice that we now have our sidebar over here that says format plot area. I want to do a solid fill. So I'm going to click on the fill button here and I want to do a solid fill. And we want to select the last column, click on the second color. So last column, second color right here, green accent six, lighter 80%. I'm going to click on that. Now it wants me to format the chart area. So I'm going to come up here to where it says plot area. I'm going to hit this down arrow, select chart area. Notice that this will now change to chart format chart area. I'm going to do a solid fill and I'm going to click the color. And this one wants me to select the last column, fourth color. So here's the last column, one, two, three, and four right here. Lighter 60, 40%. Now for step number eight, it wants us to insert a linear trend line. So I'm going to come up here to my a plus button right here where it says chart elements off to the side of our chart. I want to put a check mark next to trend line. And I want to click on this arrow right here and I'm going to click on more options. Under more options here, we want to go ahead and make sure that we set this to a width of 2.5. So right here where it says width, I'm going to change this to 2.5. And now that we're done, I'm going to go ahead and click on cell A1. I'm going to go ahead and close this sidebar here. And now we have our chart. It's looking pretty nice. So now we want to click on the list chart tab or worksheet. We want to insert a smart art graphics using the pyramid list style. So I'm going to come up here to my insert tab under smart art. Under list, I'm going to click on list and I'm going to find the one that looks like a pyramid, which is this one right here, pyramid list. I'm going to go ahead and hit o click on it and hit OK. We can go ahead and close this little sidebar here. And we want to move this smart art so that the top corner is in the inside of cell A3. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hover on this line. Notice how I get that three arrows pointing away from each other. I'm going to click hold and I'm going to drag it all the way up to A3 and let go. Notice that the border does disappear, so you might have to click and move it a little bit to make sure you get it where it needs to be. Then go ahead and click on the top box here. Let's type in paid. Click on the second box below it and type work study. Make sure you do the dash and make sure you capitalize that S. And let's go ahead and click on the third box and type unpaid. So we have paid, work study, and unpaid. Now it wants us to apply the inset 3D uh, smart art style to the graphic. However, pay attention right here. Notice how we have this box selected because we just finished typing into it. So if we select one of our smart art styles, what will happen is it will only apply to this particular square. So in order to make sure it applies to the entire smart art, we need to come up here to the outer border and we need to click once. And notice how it deselects this and now the whole thing is selected. So now we can come up here to our smart art styles. I can click the down arrow right here. And under 3D, I can find the one that says inset and it looks like it's the second one over i'm going to click on that notice how it gives it a nice 3d effect it also wants us to change the colors once again you want to make sure the outer border is selected and we'll come up here to change colors and we want to do colored fill accent one 
Let's find the one that says colored fill right here, accent one. And then go ahead and click on cell in one. So now we want to click on our funnel chart worksheet here and select A3 to B5. And we want to insert a funnel chart. To do this, we're going to hit the insert tab. Under the insert tab, under charts, let's go ahead and click on this little guy right here where it says see all charts, this dialog box. We'll click on all charts and select funnel. Here it is, our funnel chart, go ahead and hit OK. Now it wants us to apply the third chart style. So we're going to come up here to our chart styles and select the third style, style 3. We also want to change the name of the title. So let's go ahead and click on it once. Go ahead and click on it again to put your cursor in there. Let's delete this title and type in internship types awarded. We want to move this up into the corner of A7. So let's go ahead and put our cursor on the outside line right here. We get the four arrows pointing away from each other. Click hold and drag it up here to cell A7. For step number 12, we want to change the shape width to 4.5. So let's come up here to our format tab. Under our size grouping here, let's change this width to 4.5. Hit enter. Notice how it will make it a little bit smaller. It also wants us to put a border. So we'll come up here to our shape outline. We want to select the fifth column color right here, this blue accent one. We want to click on shape outline again, and we want to change the weight to three points. And notice now we have a blue border going around it. Now we want to select cell A1 to deselect everything, and we want to save this as a template. So let's go to the File tab, hit Save As. Let's change this from an Excel workbook to an Excel template. Go ahead and leave your file name here. Let's just put Template at the end of it. So once you put Template at the end of it, go ahead and hit Save. Once we've saved it, we want to go to the Time, uh, the Travel Expenses. And we want to insert a formula in cell H22 that will add everything together in from H15 to H21. To do this, we'll come to the Home tab here. We will click on Auto Sum. It will put our formula in minus the cells to add together. So now we just have to highlight the cells we want to add, which is going to be H15 all the way down to H21. Notice how it has the moving border, and notice how it puts the data range in there for us. Now hit enter. Since there's no data here, it will not have any data in H23 because there's nothing to add. Or I'm sorry, H22. So let's go ahead and click back on H22. We want to change it to a total row cell style. So we're going to come up to the Home tab under our Styles grouping. Let's click the down arrow with a line above it. And let's go ahead and click on Total. Now it wants us to select the ranges D8 to D10. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight D8 to D10. And it wants me to highlight the range A15 to G21. So I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to highlight A15 to G21. So I want both of these ranges highlighted. And I want to remove the locked formatting. So I want to come up here to my Home tab under my cells grouping where it says format right here. I'm going to hit format cells, come to the protection tab and unchecked locked and hit OK. Now it wants us to save this or nope, it wants us to protect it. So let's go ahead and come up to our review tab here. From our review tab, Let's go ahead and, before we protect the sheet, let's go ahead and deselect our selected uh, ranges. So let's go ahead and just click right here. Once we've done that, let's come up here to the protect area and let's click on protect sheet. 
make sure these three check boxes are selected protect worksheet select lock cells select unlock cells and for the password an all lowercase and all one word type go series once you've typed go series hit ok and type it again go series all one word all lowercase and hit ok so now we've protected the sheet. Now we can only type in the unprotected cells. Anything that's locked, it will give us an error message that says it is a protected sheet and we cannot make uh, unauthorized changes. Let's go ahead and click on cell A1. Let's go ahead and save this again. So let's go ahead and go to our file tab. We're gonna save as. We're going to change this back from an Excel template to an Excel workbook. Let's go ahead and hit browse. From here, let's go ahead and save it back into our downloads folder, just because that's where we put everything else. And let's go ahead and remove this template. Once you've done that, hit save. If it comes up with this message that says it already exists, do you want to replace it? Make sure you hit yes. So now that we have this saved, it wants us to select all of the sheets. So let's come down here. Let's go ahead and right click on travel expenses, hit select all sheets. Let's go to our page setup dialog box. So we'll come up here to our page layout. Let's click on this little guy right here for our page setup. Click on header footer, custom footer, and we want to put our sheet name or our file name in the left section. Go ahead and hit OK. Go to the margins tab and we're going to center everything horizontally on page. Go ahead and hit OK. And let's go put in our document properties. Let's hit the file tab, info show all properties we're going to add a tag of travel template for the subject type in cgs and for the author let's remove go series and let's type in our name once that's done go ahead and hit save Make sure that the internships by industry is the tab that is selected or the worksheet that is selected. Make sure that all of the worksheets are ungrouped. You can do that by right clicking on internships by industry. And if it says ungroup, click on ungroup. Uh, do not select all sheets. Make sure you ungroup them. Let's go ahead and save it again. And let's submit this for grading. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it. Come back to here. I'm gonna choose my file. Once again, it should be under the downloads folder. So I'm gonna go find the downloads folder. There it is, my file. I'm gonna click on it, hit open, upload, and submit for grading. And I'm going to click on my three dots next to internship travel, hit my view submissions. And it looks like I got a 95. I'm not sure why. I'm going to go ahead and click on my submission details here. And I'll scroll down. It looks like I did something wrong on step number eight. I'll hit the down arrow. It looks like I might not have changed the trend line width to 2.5. Uh, if you made this mistake, feel free to go back and fix it and turn it in for a better grade. And that's it. That concludes this walkthrough. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And like always, have a wonderful day.